Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of Programming Algorithms. In this episode we're going to look at a new special kind of variable called an array. And it's, it's the first complex data structure we look at. The variables up till now have been simple st structures like a boolean, uh, an integer, a single value of those, whereas an array is a collection of those values. So imagine if we had to record the age of everybody in the class. We could do that by declaring a variable for each person. So it would be integer age 1, integer age 2, integer age 3, all the way down. So if we had 25 students in the class, we'd have to declare 25 variables. If we had 40 students in the class, we'd have to declare 40 variables. If we had, as with my first year class, uh, one of the other classes I teach, of 108 students. So we'd have to declare 108 variables. Uh, which is, it's just not pretty to see that in a, in a program. There's it's just so much unnecessary code, whereas we have a special kind of variable that allows us to declare an array of the same type of variable, and we call it an array. So it makes things nice and simple. So if we declare an integer of type, the type is integer, and it's a collection of 40 integers, and the overall name of that integer is variable collection is age. So what we're saying is, give me space for 40 integers and um, use the handle age to refer to them. So we've created 40 boxes essentially. The overall collection of boxes is called age and the only kind of values we can put into it are integer types. Interestingly enough, and this is common to some programming languages but not to others, when we number an array of 40 elements, we number the boxes 0 to 39. I would see this very much like uh, UK hotels. So in the UK, if I have an eight-story hotel, I've got ground floor, first floor, second floor, third floor, fourth floor, fifth floor, sixth floor, and seventh floor. So if you have eight stories, the seven floors on a ground floor, and the same thing with an array. You go from 0 to 39 if you've got 40 elements, you go from 0 to 99 if you've got 100 elements, you go from 0 to 999 if you've got 1000 elements. So we start at 0 and work our way up to 39. It's, it's just one of those things in some programming languages they do it, in others they don't. They start at 1 and go up to 40, but in the in many, they start at zero and work the way up to 39 or the size minus one. So if the size is 40, we go from zero to array size minus one. So let's look at the array with values in it because the numbers we're, we're looking at are just the addresses of the elements of the array, but the values in it are something else. So let's say we've got the ages of some of the students. The first student who's, a, who's referred to as age zero is 44, the second student in the class, age one is 23, the third student in the class, age two is 42, and so on. Um, the sixth student in the class, age five, we don't know their age yet, so we've left that as being blank. And between numbers seven and 38, we've done dot, 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 dot there to indicate there's values in there as well. If I say print out the value of the first person's age, that is address zero in the array, I get 44. So if I print out the variable value of the first element, number 0, we get 44. If I print out the third element of the array, which is number 2, we get 42. And if I print out the last element of the array, which is the third, number 39 is the 40th element, we get 82. If I try and print out the 41st element of the array, which is age 40, I, get, I should get an error in my code and it should say it's out of the bounds of the array. So the, the bounds of the array is 0 to 39. So if I try and print out 40, 41, 42 or anything like that, it will hopefully give us an error. Some programming languages are less good about checking the bounds of arrays. And that's how a lot of hackers break into systems by trying reading values out of the scope of the array, but most good modern programming languages will check to ensure that you're, not, you, you're only reading values within the scope of the array. So if I declare a variable array integers 0 to 14, 49, that means I should only look at the 50 elements of the array. Let's say we found out that the sixth student who's age 5 let's say we found out that their age was 54, then we could all, all we need to do to assign that 
element of the array, its value, we just uh, assign it typically the same way we assign any variable. We just so sixth element is age five, gets the value or is assigned 54, and then that will be filled in in the blank space, just like that. Perfect. I like to think of um, the elements of the array as being like slots in a pigeonhole, files in a filing cabinet, or locations in memory even more boring. Um, if we look at our array again, and let's say we wanted to add one to each value in the array, we'd get, it, we'd get those values if we want to add one on. If we did that, how we could do it, coding-wise, is to say age 0 gets the value age 0 plus 1, age 1 gets the value age 1 plus 1, age 2 gets age 2 plus 1, age 3 gets age 3 plus 1. That's very slow and tedious, and if we've a 100 element array or 10,000 element array, that would take a lot to do. Whereas we do have a construct that allows us to add one to a value and keep going around and adding one to a value going from 0 to 39. Can you think what that is? If you think it's a loop, you're quite correct. So we could do that using a loop. So we could declare a counter n, start at 0, and keep on going until n reaches 40. When it reaches 40, it'll stop, so it'll just do 0 to 39. And we do age n gets the value age n plus 1. So it'll be age 0 gets the value age 0 plus 1, age 1 gets the value age 1 plus 1, age 2 gets the value age 2 plus 1, etc. And then we add 1 onto n each time around the loop. We said it before and we'll say it again as well. We can do that also using a for loop, a slightly reduced way. All we need to do is say for n in the range, for n in 0 to 39, do age n gets the value age n plus 1. So what does that do? That says if when n is 0, age 0 gets age 0 plus 1. When n is 1, age 1 gets age 1 plus 1, etc, etc, up to 39, and then it stops. So when we're manipulating arrays, loops, and in particularly for loops, are a very effective way of traversing or going through each element of the array. If we wanted to add up the ages of everybody in the class, how we do it is as follows. We just say the total of the array is, we'd have a, 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 a running variable called total, and we'd go from, again, each element of the array using the for loop into 0 to 39, and then we'd say total gets the value of total plus the current value. Total starts off as 0, then age 0 is added onto it the next time around, age 1 is added onto that, age 2 is added onto that, age 3 is added onto that, age 4 is added onto that, age 5 is added onto that. So the running total keeps adding on each value onto it until you get to the 39th element, then the 39th element is added. Then we've got the total of all the people in the array, their total age. So if we want to calculate the average age, all we'd say is the average is same thing, we do the running total, we go 0, start with the total, add all the ages up. Then how do we get the average? Well, if we're talking about a simple mean, a simple arithmetic mean, we're just saying divide that total by the number of people in the class. So if there's 40 people in the class, let's divide the total by 40, and then we'll get the average age of all the students. At this point, I think I'll, I'll talk about um, using variables in a, in, a, in a constructive and progressive way and trying to avoid hard coding stuff. When we have print total divided by 40, what we have done is hard coded the size of the array to be 40 right there. So we've said the value is 40 there. If we change the array to 70, we have to change two places in the code. We have to change the for loop for being in 0 to 39 to 0 to 69, and we have to change total to be total divided by 70 now. If we change the length of the array to 100, we have to change it for n 0 to 99, and then print total divided by 100. So if we change the size of the array, there's a, there's a couple of different values that need to be changed. So we can use a variable to reduce the amount of changes being required. So we declare a variable, and we call it the size of the array, array size, then, and we say it's 40, then we don't need to divide the total by 40 at all. We can just divide total by array size, which is 40. And we can also get rid of the 39 and say it's array size minus 1, so because 40 minus 1 is 39. Then what we've got is a very flexible approach to um, the array. If we change the array to 100, we just change the variable called array size to 100, and then um, the for loop will be 0 to 99, 
and that we'll be printing the total of total divided by 100. So um, we like using variables like that. It's almost in driving, like defensive driving. Anytime we hard code a value in, we end up with problems like the Y2K problem, where the in the year 2000 was a lot of problems because certain year values were hard coded in. So we try and avoid hard coding of things like the size of the array or I don't know, the compound interest rate we're paying. So if, if our compound interest rate is 15%, instead of dividing everything, multiplying everything by 15 over 100, let's save a variable called interest rate as 15 over 100. And then everywhere else in the code, just whatever that variable name is, use that in the code. And then if we change the interest rate, we just change the value in one place. With an example like this where there's only two, places we're using the array size in, it's not as significant. But when we're looking at tens of thousands of lines of code, it is very important that we use variables to avoid hard coding values as much as possible. We can also have an array of real numbers. So if we were looking at people's bank balances, for example, um, the first customer has 22 euro on their account, the second customer has 65.50, the third has minus two euro 20, so they're in debt, the third has 78.70, the fourth has, uh, the, the fifth customer along rather has 58.54, the sixth customer along is in debt as well, the seventh customer has zero on their balance, and the eighth customer has 47.65. So, if I was, if the bank asked me, can you write a program to tell me who's in debt? By inspection, we can tell the third customer along and the sixth customer along, customer number two and five are the ones in debt. But if we have 100,000 customers, we're not going to do it by inspection. So, we're going to write a little bit of code, and it's a for loop again. It's go, go through the whole loop, check the, that the current bank balance is check if zero is bigger than the current bank balance and if the current customer's bank balance is less than zero just print out a message saying that that user is in debt now in reality we won't just print out a message saying that user is in debt we'll probably print out a report page for each customer saying this is the customer this is their balance maybe this is their credit limit and things like that but in our case if we go back to the list we see it's customers number two and five. So what, what this, when we run this program, it will just print out user two is in debt, user five is in debt. So it'll print out the message because we're in a loop for each customer that's, has, whose balance is less than zero. We can also have an array of characters. So if we're, I don't know, doing a gene sequencing thing and we've got uh, the, the four um, genome types A, C, G and T, uh, and we've stored an array of 40 characters and we just want to look at um, how many G's are in the gene string or gene array. All we do is start from the start of the array, go to the end of the array. If the current element is of gene type G, then add one onto the count. So we start off, set the G count to be zero and keep adding one. And then once we finish the loop, just print out that the total G count is um, whatever G count is. We could do the same for an A count. We can also, as well as having an array of uh, characters, we can have an array of strings. So we could have words, an array of words. For example, we could have an array of pets. So person number one has a pet of a dog. Person number two has a pet of a cat. Person number three has a pet of a dog. Person number four, a bird. Person number five, a fish. Person number six, a fish. Person number seven, a cat. And person number eight is a cat as well. So we could ask how many people have dogs, how many people have fish, how many people have birds, things like that in the same way. And we just do a loop for n equals zero to seven. If uh, pet, pets open square bracket n equals cat, then add one to cat count. Same as we've done for the, for the characters. And finally, we can have an array of Boolean. So we'll remember a Boolean is a special type that only has one of two values, true or false. And it could be something like, are you, I don't know, coming into college or something like that. If you're coming, uh, student number one, zero is not com is coming into college, student number one is coming into college, student number two is not coming into college, student number three is coming in, four isn't, five is, six isn't, and seven isn't. So we could record whether they are or aren't coming into college or something like that. That's an array of Boolean. So same as the variable types, we can have an array of integers, reals, 
characters, strings, and booleans. So that's it for this episode. Thanks very much. We'll see you on the next one.